This is the brand new Gigabyte Aorus 16X, and Gigabyte's mission this year is to kind of bring their users a bit more for the price. So like most of their laptops are going to try and start with 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of the standard 16. And that's kind of what's happening here with this guy. And you know, the design is pretty cool. Like it has a very unique color. It's like a blue. And because they've layered their lithography, depending on how you like shine it off a light, the blue tends to get lighter and darker. Now the top of the lid is made out of an aluminum alloy, but most of the rest of the laptop is made out of plastic. This is using a 14th gen processor. So not the Meteor Lake stuff, which means it can boost a little bit higher. It obviously performs a little bit better if you're buying this for gaming. The competition to this would be like the Asus Strix, for example, but you know, it only weighs 5.07 pounds, which is not too heavy. I still feel like it's light enough that you could take this to school, but there are a couple of little niche tricks. So the logo doesn't light up. It's just like, sketched on the top over here, but the back has these RGB strips that span the entire back. But underneath here is the Oris logo. And when you have the RGB on and it's hitting your desk, you'll see the Oris logo light up. Now, some of you might think this is cool, but if you don't like it, you can obviously turn it off. Now you do have a good amount of IO. Personally, I would have loved for them to put all the ports on the back, but they are on the left and right side towards the front. Now you do have your power connector, RJ45. You do have a HDMI 2.1, USB-A, a Thunderbolt 4 port. And then on the other side, another USB-A port, a regular Type-C port, micro SD, and a combo audio jack. Now, as expected, this being a five pound laptop, you can obviously open it up with one hand. The wobble's not too bad. Like I've used previous Gigabyte laptops where the screen would just wobble all over the place. This one is pretty good overall. The deck of the keyboard is obviously a plastic. There's a lot of design elements on here. So you have a bunch of lines going diagonally across the touchpad. Oris logo on the top right. Actually looks a little crooked to be quite honest, but it is what it is. Sticker placement looking pretty good. Like, you know, they're pretty straight. The sticker guy is not drinking again. I love it. But you do have a lot of RGB. So you have these transparent WASD keys, which you can obviously change to different colors in terms of the RGB output. And of course you can do the same thing for the rest of the keyboard. There's no fingerprint scanner, but you do have Windows Hello facial recognition to log you in. Front facing camera on the Gigabyte RS 16X. This is a 1080p webcam. You guys let me know how it looks and most importantly, how do the microphones sound? Now the touchpad is about 26% bigger than the Aorus 15X. It is made out of glass, so it feels very good to use. The typing experience is okay. There's a little bit of keyboard flex in the middle, but you know, it feels good to type on. It has a nice sensation to it. The actuation is deep enough that I find it perfect for gaming. The only thing I don't like about this laptop is the speakers. They are on the bottom of the laptop. There's two two watt speakers that come out over here and they don't get the loudest and they, they are just a little bit too low for a laptop this size. Now I would have loved an OLED display, but this is a pretty good IPS panel. It's obviously 16 inches. It's 16 by 10, 165 Hertz refresh rate. It's matte. So it doesn't produce a lot of reflections when the light is hitting it. It's a pretty good panel. Like it doesn't have the most fulfilling color gamut, but it's good enough for most stuff. The color accuracy is very good. And the screen brightness is excellent, like over 500 nits of brightness. So I'd feel very comfortable using this for gaming, watching content, and most importantly, doing any sort of design work. Now this laptop obviously has a muck switch, but it's kind of confusing if it's working because technically performance mode is supposed to be only using the discrete GPU. But it says over here that the iGPU is also on, which means technically it would be in hybrid mode. Now I went into the BIOS to see what was going on and when performance mode is activated, which does require a restart, which means there's a muck switch, it does say that the discrete GPU is being used in the BIOS, but it doesn't tell you that in the software. So I feel like they need to make this a bit more clear for people who are using the control center. 
Now there's also a bunch of AI stuff. You have AI boost, you have AI power gear, all this other stuff to help increase performance depending on the application. They've also included stable diffusion baked into the software so you can obviously create generative images if you really want to. I tried a couple of them, they came out really weird, but if you've always wanted to try stable diffusion without having to install it yourself, it's already baked into the software for you. Now this unit is using an Intel i7-14650HX CPU. It's paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. It has an NVIDIA RTX 4070 that can boost up to 140 watts, 16 inch IPS display, and one terabyte of MVME SSD storage. Now look, this is using a 14th gen processor, so it's gonna be faster than most Meteor Lake processors. It can just perform better since there's more power being used. You have a bigger chassis to cool it. Single core clock speeds are exactly where they should be, obviously faster than an i9 Meteor Lake processor. Multi-core speeds are also very good compared to the Meteor Lake competition. Now, when it comes to actual everyday performance, it performed well. Like I didn't have any issues at all. Like if you're buying this for a mixed production, let's say you're gaming and also doing some sort of work, regardless of whether you're using Photoshop, Premiere Pro, or even Mozilla Firefox, it's gonna handle those things quite well. This CPU is just made for that type of stuff. Now, if you're gaming, this is using an NVIDIA RTX 4070. The fact that it boosts up to 140 watts is nothing special. Like an RTX 4070 after 100 watts is pretty much the same performance. The highest I've seen this boost up to is around 136. So it's not false advertising, but it's not exactly 140 watts either. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter. You're just not gonna see a difference. Regardless of whether you're gaming at 1920 by 1200 or 2560 by 1600, this GPU can obviously handle it. Heat is pretty good. I didn't have any issues with hot keyboards or anything like that. The CPU runs at a fairly good temperature. The boost clock speeds stay nice and high. So overall, nothing to complain about there. Fan noise is very typical for a gaming laptop. Like you leave the fans on turbo, you're talking about like 63 decibels, which is quite loud. You leave it on performance with the fans on normal, that drops down to around 53 to 55. And obviously if you're taking this thing to class, there's an eco mode so you can keep fans at around 40 decibels. The internals is exactly what you'd expect for an upgradable laptop, one that's using an HX processor. So you do have five heat pipes running back and forth, fairly big, fans, you have upgradable RAM, you can upgrade this to 64 if you really want to. You have a Wi-Fi 7 swappable card, and then you have a one terabyte NVMe SSD over here, and a second slot available if you want to put another storage drive. Two speakers on the bottom, and then you have a massive 99.2 watt hour battery. I was able to get eight hours of use before needing to charge, which is really good for a laptop that's using an HX CPU. So here's the thing. I didn't really have any bad experiences with this laptop. Like overall, it's a solid performer. It doesn't get hot, performance is good, it's consistent. The battery life is way more than respectable for a gaming laptop. The only things that I don't like are software features, specifically the Gigabyte Control Center and the not so great speakers. I think it's gonna come down to the price. Like 1949 is obviously not high-end gaming laptop category, but it's still like upper mid-range. And its competitors are obviously the Strix 16 or even like the Legion 5 Pro. If you can get this laptop for a better price than some of the competition on the market, you're gonna have a good experience with it. And I think that's like the message to deliver to you guys. It's a great laptop. As long as the price beats out the competition, I'll think you'll be happy. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you've liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.